exhausted. I must have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. Doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. Well, it's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was gonna spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. The wardrobe is actually made of real wood, and not that synthetic crap that makes me sneeze and itch all over. Alright, so my wardrobe's sort of chic deficient, but I can't afford to be cutting edge. Useful, practical, and cheap is my shopping mantra. It's a bunch of drawings I drew when I was a kid. I don't even know why I brought them here. They mean absolutely nothing to me. It's Constable Guybrush, my toy mo- Oh, ape. He doesn't much like being called monkey. That's my desk, so, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures, though, because lately, inspiration's been fleeting at best. Shelves. It's a picture of me and my friends. My on-again, off-again diary. We've had a turbulent relationship, her and I. I'm part of the should-be-reading-more-but-life's too short generation. We embrace our illiteracy. The last book I read was How to Seduce the Man of Your Dreams. Now, if I can just find a man to dream about, I'll be all set. It's a picture of Charlie, Emma, and me in Florence Park. Marcus took it about a month ago before it got real hot. There's a loose sheet of paper in here. Hey, it's my timesheet from the cafe. I completely forgot I put it in here. Good thing I found it, because I'm broke. I've been keeping a diary intermittently since I was five years old. Not the same one, of course. I started this one, I think, April of this year. I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? Pretty good, and you? Fantastic. Listen, April, how about you and me getting together sometime soon? Like, uh, tonight. The pavilion is really cooking this week. We could pop some raptures, do a little close dancing. How about it? No, that's not gonna work, Zach. What? You got something against me, babe? Do I offend you in some way? Oh, no. I just don't think it's a good idea for us to be... together like that. Hey, whatever. You come crawling back when you realize your mistake, babe. I'm out of here. What an asshole.
organic plastic. It grows, and it converts carbon dioxide into oxygen, just like real plants, but it doesn't need nourishment of any kind. Convenient, but disturbing. It's a fact, as in F-A-C-T, Free Access Terminal. That's Fiona, my landlady. She's all right. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. But I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live. Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then. Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. 
Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. What's up with Zack Lee? Zack? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. She knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory. But when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council. And after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Borderhouse? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. 
It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone really ask with an interest in local affairs. What I do know, you know, the whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area, and that about 100 years ago, they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect. Aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice. And I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak, so to speak, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap, and it's cheap, and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient. And it's got, a uh, an interesting view. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. Do you like Newport? The, 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 the city? Well, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love or hate? I haven't decided yet, darling. Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? The omnipresent screen. I don't pretend to know how it works, but all the data apparently passes through tiny little black holes in the fabric of our dimension. You know, that really freaks me out when I think about it. It's a matchbook.
annual summer blowout. Summer at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, August 4th, 8 p.m. Free food, live performances by Royne Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go-Getters. Tickets available at the bar, $10 only, spread the word. Be considerate. Keep the volume down after 11 p.m. Fiona. Common Room Duty Roster, July 27th, April and Emma. Oh, joy, manual labor, my favorite. Pizza and Movie Night, Monday, July 31st, BYOS. BYO what? Soap? I'm sorry. Big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know what's strange? I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God, I'm glad that life is behind me. Never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. Oye, senorita. Yes? How are you this morning, senorita bonita? Hot. I see. The summers in Newport are never pleasant. And it will get worse before it gets better. They say there's another heat wave headed our way. Yeah, so I heard. So, you gonna be all right? You don't look dressed for the weather. Si Dios quiere. Sunshine and pretty senoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie. Like all good movies. But tell me, senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? Cold and rainy like yours. Está bien. We are alike, you and I. But this heat is not why you are unhappy, no? You are trouble, my nightmares. What? You are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. Is I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, señorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. 
If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? We all do, April. That's the reason we are here, you and me. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please, think about it. And señorita, cuidado. Be careful. This guy's out here, all day long, all year. He never stops painting, ever. And I doubt he's ever finished even one painting. The official VAVA notice board. Only registered students are allowed to put notices up here. That's Mary Sam, VAVA's founding mother and pro-Venice activist back before the riots. She was assassinated by a corporate hired gun right after the school opened some 90 years ago. perfectly good work glove with just one big hole in it. What a terrible, terrible waste. Emma's really good with the Holla Sculptor, and her imagination is so vivid. Good thing we're best friends, or I might be jealous. Some books on color, composition, and... duck hunting? Hmm. Those sketchbooks belong to some of the other students who share the space. Acrylic and oil paints. The tools of my trade. The best thing about working up here is that nobody borrows my stuff. I can only think of two things more depressing than a blank canvas. Death and taxes.
Hiya. Emma? Hi. I didn't expect to see you here today. Me neither. Are you busy? Nah. Well, I am. But I was about to wrap up for today anyway. Why? What's going on? I have an important message for you. Yeah? From whom? Believe it or not, girlfriend, but it's from Cortez. Excuse me? He said to tell you that he wants to meet you, these are his exact words, where children visualize their dreams. Visualize dreams? What's that supposed to mean? Me? I was hoping you would know. Did he say anything else? Nope, that was it. Why does he want to meet you? Oh, don't tell me. You guys are having a secret love affair. Oh, yeah. We're eloping and flying to Africa tonight. It's all been happening so fast. My heart's a flutter. <sighs> How romantic. I couldn't imagine a better catch than Senor Cortez, the Latin lover. <laughs> What was that message again? Cortez said to meet him where children visualize their dreams. Did he talk to you about nightmares? No. Why? I don't know. It's just... My dreams are really starting to bother me. There you go again with dreams. You're obsessing, April. They're just dreams. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. And a dragon is just a dragon. What's dragons got to do with it? Oh, don't tell me you had a dream about dragons. A dragon. A talking dragon. I'm gonna regret this, but what happened in your dream? Well, there was a dragon. I think we established that already. You had a dream about a dragon. Not just any dragon, though. A talking dragon. Yep, we've been through that. Talking dragon covered. What did it say? She. It was a she, a female dragon. What, you could tell from the skirt, high heels, and lipstick? Don't mock me, Emma. She said something to me. Something about being the mother of the future. She probably said time to get up and go to school, April. If you don't want to take my dreams seriously, I'll just stop telling you about them. Is that a promise? Like you're in any position to make fun of my dreams? Have you looked at your sculptures lately? Oh, that's low. I'd punch you out if I wasn't so hungry. You want to go get some lunch at the Fringe? I'll drop by after I clean up around here. I'll be there for a while, so bye.